Hi, this is part two of lesson six. What causes ocean currents? I'm really curious to know what ideas you have about what causes ocean currents. If we were together, I would be excited to hear what you and your partner or just yourself were thinking about that answer, but keep it in your mind as we do the next part of our lesson. So what you're gonna need for this part of the lesson is something to write on and with, another person to talk to, and um, if possible, a copy of an article called The Gulf Stream, A Current That Helped Win a War. So how can you get a copy of this article? So to read The Gulf Stream, A Current That Helped Win a War, you can either get it from the Seattle Public School Science Department by going to this link, which is www.seattleschools.org slash academics slash curriculum slash science. And once you're on that page, scroll down until you see middle school. And then from there, you can download the lesson six packet from the Oceans, Atmosphere, and Climate Unit. Or if you're a sixth grader and you have access to Amplify Science, then just open the Amplify Science, just like you would normally through Clever. And then from the menu, choose the library and then go to the Oceans, Atmosphere, and Climate Unit, and then choose the article called The Gulf Stream, A Current That Helped Win a War. So in order to figure out what determines how ocean currents near Christchurch move, we must first understand what causes ocean currents to move. So Kiti Parada, the director of the New Zealand Farm Council, has sent an article to help you understand this question. All right, I've opened the article and it's called The Gulf Stream, a current that helped win a war. And when I first look at this map, I wonder about these different colors. What do they show? I could write a question about that, but I am gonna see if I can get a bit more information and ask a deeper question. So I see there's a caption and the caption says, this image of the Atlantic Ocean uses color to show water temperature. The warmest water looks red and the coolest water looks blue. You can see the warmer water of the Gulf Stream traveling north along the coast of North America. So if I scroll up a little bit to look at this picture again, I, I do notice that there seems to be uh, the color of the water is more red and orange that follows along this red line. So, I, I know that these colors represent ocean surface temperatures. And so I wonder how the Gulf Stream affects ocean surface temperature. So I'll record a question about that. So maybe I'll just click here and I can write a question here. So I wrote my question in that box. And if you're using a paper copy of this article, then you can just write down some of your ideas. Or if you're just reading along with me instead of having an article in front of you, then just jot down some of your thoughts as we're reading on a piece of paper. So let's, let's keep going down and let's read the first paragraph. It says, oh, let me move my picture a little bit. Can you believe that an ocean current may have helped the United States become the United States? Before the Revolutionary War, Benjamin Franklin, you may know him as one of the founders of our country, and his cousin mapped a strong current called the Gulf Stream, which flows north along the east coast of the United States. So, so right away, I have a couple questions. I'm wondering, how could um, an ocean current help win a war? So I have a question about that, but I, I want my question to go a little deeper than that. So I'm going to keep reading just to see if there's some more things that I could wonder about. Okay, so starting with this, this sentence, understanding. Understanding where the Gulf Stream flows was helpful for sailors coming and going from the East Coast ports because ships that sailed in the same direction as the Gulf Stream or cut straight across it could go faster than ships that tried to sail against it. Some people have even claimed that this knowledge of the Gulf Stream might have helped America win the Revolutionary War because American ships were able to travel around the area more quickly than British ships. So after reading the rest of that paragraph, it seems like the sailors that used this current to increase their speed and make the trip go faster because they understood a little bit more about the currents than other people. So this was a long time ago. 
So I wonder if sailors today still use the same Gulf current to travel faster. And so I might highlight where it says ships were able to travel around the area more quickly and make a note and ask my question, do sailors today use the Gulf current to go faster? Okay, let's save that. All right, let's keep reading. Oh, so here's a, well, it kind of looks like an antique map. The caption says, Benjamin Franklin and his cousin made the first maps of the Gulf Stream. If I look at this map, I can see it looks like the east coast of the United States, and then there's this large sort of gray stripe in the ocean that looks like it's representing the, the Gulf Stream. It looks like a similar picture here um, with the same kind of band, just drawn differently. Let's read more about this. I'm intrigued about how this current forms. The Gulf Stream still flows today, and it still affects how goods are shipped around the world. The Gulf Stream forms near the tip of Florida and flows north, carrying warm water from the Caribbean up the east coast of North America and across the North Atlantic. This large, strong current carries more than 100 million cubic meters of water per second, more than all the world's rivers combined. That is so much water. Okay, I, I have some questions about this. I, I know the ocean is full of water, so I shouldn't be surprised that a current has a lot of water, obviously. But it's interesting that it's saying that the current is moving faster than the water around it. And it says that it moves 100 million cubic meters of water per second. So I'm just going to highlight that. And I just, I wonder, is that faster than other currents? Do all currents move at this speed? And in addition to these two questions, I do also wonder how it forms, like what causes the Gulf Stream to form in that location. And I know that Kitty Parada sent this article to help us understand more about how ocean currents form. And so I'm, I'm eager to keep reading because I think the answer to this last question that I wrote is going to be found later in the article. So let's keep reading. Okay. So what causes the Gulf Stream current to flow and what determines its route? Route is just a word that means the pathway that something takes. The strength and direction of the Gulf Stream are driven partly by, ooh, vocab word, prevailing winds. Winds that blow in the same direction and are strong enough to push ocean water around. So let's pause for just a moment and let's take a look at this vocabulary word that we just learned from the article. Prevailing winds are winds that move in one direction and are strong enough to push ocean currents. So that's an important vocab word for us to remember as we're trying to understand how ocean currents form. All right, so let's keep reading. Okay, prevailing winds near the equator blow from east to west across the ocean. Prevailing winds farther north and south blow in the opposite direction. They blow from west to east. Another factor that affects the direction of the Gulf Stream and other ocean currents is the location of the continents. When a current hits a continent, it is redirected to follow the coastline. So here's the picture that we were looking at at the beginning of our lesson. And now this is a little different. It shows major ocean currents and prevailing winds. So you can see there are red lines, blue lines, and now white lines. Let me move this up. The, the title is cut off a little bit by my picture, but you can actually see quite a lot here. So it told us that the prevailing winds by the equator move from east to west. And we can see that happening here. This is the equator. You can see it happening here. That's near the equator. These ones come up, but they're also traveling from east to west. And then it says that prevailing winds north and south of the equator fall the other way. And if I look really closely at this map, I'm also noticing that the currents seem to be following in the same direction 
as the wind. If you look here, you can see this, this white line represents the prevailing wind. If I look at this red line, it's traveling the same direction. This red line, same direction. This blue line and that blue line, same direction. But then it seems like when it hits a continent, it changes the direction of it because it runs along the coast of the continent. That's what the article is telling us, and that's what this graphic is showing too. Let's keep reading. Okay, near the equator, the prevailing winds blow from the east to the west and drive ocean currents from the east to the west. Closer to Earth's poles, the prevailing winds blow in the opposite direction from west to east. On this map, you can see how the direction of the prevailing, the direction of the prevailing winds in different places on Earth affect the patterns of the ocean current. Okay, so the Gulf Stream, back to what we're learning about in this article, flows from south to north. So from Florida in the south up past Maine um, in the north. How do winds blowing from the east or west make a current that's moving north? So that's actually a, a really good question that I wonder too. So I'm just going to highlight that question instead of writing my own because I'm like, yeah, I want to know the answer to that too. The Gulf Stream starts off the coast of Florida where the prevailing winds blow the water west towards the coast of North America. So when, okay, hold on, it says here, um, where the prevailing winds blow the water west towards Florida in the same direction as the wind. When the water reaches Florida, it can't go further west. Florida is in the way, so it can't keep going. So it's forced to turn. So the water flows north along the edge of North America. When the Gulf Stream reaches New England, the prevailing winds moving from west to east blow the Gulf Stream away from the coast of North America and across the North Atlantic. So let's look at that one more time. So here is kind of where we are, and we can see that the winds are blowing this way. They're just pushing the water, pushing the water, and when it hits North America, it just travels up. But when it gets up to the top, there are these prevailing winds flowing east, and so it gets pushed that way. That's cool. And then you get a graph, then you get a picture that looks like this, where it's pushing this way, it runs along the coast, and then up here it gets pushed that way. Okay. I feel like I'm learning so much about this. It's very interesting. Okay, so um, let's see. The Gulf Stream warms up the air wherever it goes. The warm water carried from the equator contains a lot of energy, which transfers to the cooler air above it, bringing warmer temperatures to the east coast of North America and making Western Europe warmer than other places at similar latitudes. Oh, that's so interesting. We already know that energy from the ocean can transfer to the air, or energy in the air can transfer to the ocean, depending on which one is cooler and which one, one is warmer. So what we're hearing here is that because this water is so warm, it's actually transferring energy to the air. And so the, the, any land that's near this Gulf Stream is going to have warmer air than it would at another place with the same latitude. Okay, so this caption just says, the Gulf Stream begins when warm water near the equator is pushed west across the Atlantic Ocean by prevailing winds. That's a nice summary of what we've been learning so far. When the water runs into North America, it is forced to go north along the coastline. In this map, the warmest water is represented by the color red and the coldest water is represented by the color blue. Water at a temperature between the warmest and the coldest is represented by yellow, orange, or green. The Gulf Stream is one of the most important surface ocean currents in the world. Wow. Okay, that seems like something worth highlighting. I'm going to do that. Okay, because that seems important. It is very strong. It covers a long distance and has significant effects on the way humans live. Without its influence on trade routes and maybe even on the Revolutionary War, the United States might never have become the United States. Wow, this is, this is a pretty cool article. Okay, so there was one other vocab word that popped up besides prevailing winds, and that vocab word is continents. And I think you probably already know what that word means, but let's just go ahead and review it. It's just any of Earth's main continuous areas of land, such as Africa, Asia, North or South America, any of those continents. So after reading this article, I have a question that I want you to think about. 
I want you to discuss it with someone if you can, or jot down some of your ideas about it. But after reading this article, how could you answer this question now? What determines how ocean currents move? <laughs>